here to give our lives as worship to you, to give our reaction to you, Lord. We trust you. You give me this uh, whole day, our whole lives, Lord. I pray you bless that steward as he brings to you what you brought to him. You bring to us what you brought to him. We love you, Jesus. We pray that he was a common with him. We're going to do a series in Hebrews 11. And I don't know that you heard this. Probably not old news. Uh, Mike, can you shut that back door? Well, those are okay. It's the, the one to the outside. I don't know why it's a distraction. start a sermon series in Hebrews 11, the Faith Hall of Fame. And uh, all the, the quote preachers we have are going, going to take a person out of this chapter and talk about it. And the rules are, you can go back to like, I'm doing Abel. I'm going back, I'm going to talk about Cain and Abel. So, there's, there's latitude in this, but the main theme will be Hebrews 11. So, I, I hope this works out well. I think it will. And today I want to talk about Abel. And by faith, Abel still speaks. Okay. Now this is what I want to do. I have... We're gonna we're gonna go through Genesis 4, 1 to 14. It'll be up there. Alright? I'm gonna click through it, but I'm not gonna read it. All you guys are gonna have to follow along by reading that and make sure that I'm not fibbing. I'm gonna tell a story. And it's gonna be like Sunday school. And I'm not I'm going to tell the story based upon what you see. If I start to get off like in left field and I'm not following the text right, I want you guys to make clear your throat noises like <coughs> <coughs> right? And if I'm on track, I want to hear something like amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Right. How about a how about I'm getting off track? What am I going to hear? <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Guess what we're going to talk about? Two brothers. Two brothers. Well, you two are two sisters, right? <laughs> we're going to talk about two brothers today. And one of them... Oh. This is edited. Verse 1 is edited because we're in Sunday school. If you want to know what it really says, look it up. Okay? <laughs> I edited it for Sunday school. Two brothers. One of them was born first and one was born second. How about that? So one was older and one was younger. Do you have a do you have an older sister, Willa? Yes. You have an older sister, right? And, and you have a younger sister. You have a younger sister too. Okay, so these two brothers were born long, long ago, and they lived in Eden, not the Garden of Eden, but they were still in Eden. Okay, so that's uh, um, good to know. And over the course of time, the older brother thought, "Hey." I am going to make a sacrifice to God. I think that would be a good idea. So this older brother, he tended crops and grew things in the land. So he brought some of the some of the crops he grew and sacrificed them to the Lord. Okay. The younger brother saw that and thought, 
sacrifice for the Lord. You know, the Lord has been good. The Lord has given me so much. I'm going to make sacrifice too. The younger brother raised animals. So he took some of his best, some of the firstborn, and took some of the fatty portions, the like the juiciest, best cuts, and he sacrificed those to the Lord. And the Lord looked down and saw that and goes, Oh, that's Abel. Abel's being very pleasing. And the Lord said something to make Abel realize that what he had done was pleasing and also didn't say something to Cain. And Cain realized what he did wasn't so pleasing. And oh. so Cain, Cain was angry. It was his idea, wasn't it? Oh, I was the one who sacrificed. It was my idea. I did this and God ignored me. But my little brother comes in and starts burning animals and God looks on him with favor. What? What gives? Then King said, or the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And Cain, Cain didn't really have a response to that. If you do right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. I read this piece. Okay, we're going back to Sunday school. So what did Cain do? Did he listen to what the Lord said? Now this is interesting. God is still talking to people. Right? I thought that quit with Adam and Eve for some reason. But no. And actually, this is still in Eden. So God is still talking to people in Eden. And said to Cain, if you just do what's right, you know, it'll be good. So Cain couldn't, couldn't uh, shift from being irritated about his idea being ignored, I guess. I don't know. You should be like... <coughs> Because that isn't really what the, the script says, is it? Amen? Amen. Okay. So, I think he's mad because it was his idea and his little brother got all the attention. And so he's mad at his little brother. And he says, little brother, let's go out in the field. <laughs> so he takes him out in the field. We're going out in the field. said to Cain the Lord said to Cain where is your brother Abel I don't know am I my brother's keeper now why okay first he hears what the Lord tells him to do. He doesn't do it. He doesn't, doesn't do what is right. If you do what is right, it will go well with you. Sin is crouching at your door, but you must master it. He ignores all that good advice. He takes the brother out, kills him, and then pretends that what? God didn't see him do it? Um... Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. 
Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer, and whoever finds me will kill me. Well, Cain was worried about dream, being driven from the presence of the Lord. You would think that Cain doesn't care about the Lord. Actually, he does. He, I believe Cain had a relationship with the Lord. He wasn't... It's easy to think Cain is a murderer, Cain is evil, Cain is all these bad things, and he can't control his anger, and he can't do this, and he can't do that. But you know what? The Lord had a relationship with Cain in Eden. So, um, and God is still talking to him here. And Cain is worried about being driven from the presence of the Lord. Okay. Uh, Abel is dead. Now, Abel is in Hebrews 11, 14. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he was dead. Abel still speaks. That is an interesting praise, even though he's dead. What is Abel saying? What does the writer of Hebrews mean? Abel still speaks. And what does it mean that Abel Abel had a, a better sacrifice, a better offering. What was better about it? Well, it was first fruits. Instead of Cain, he just gave some. What is just some? Well, did, did Cain like rummage through the grapes that he was going to make wine out of? And he put all the good grapes in his wine press and took some of the leftover grapes and offered them to the Lord? I don't know. But obviously Cain, Cain's relationship with God was reflected by him offering some of the best he had. So is that why it was better? Was it more about the relationship and what Cain was doing, uh, what Abel was doing, rather than about the actual sacrifice? Micah 6 8 is one of my favorite verses. And we're going to read 6 6 through 8. I don't know where I'm getting that from, but. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased? with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of, of olive oil, shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. Is it really about the sacrifice? Right. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? to act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Okay, that's NIV. I'm going to teach you a song. I, I might have tried to teach this before. I don't know. I've preached a few times. Micah 6, 8. There's a song. Have you heard it? If you've heard it, raise your hand. Yes. Okay. He has shown thee Oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, he has shown thee. And the women echo it. Oh, I say, oh man, you say echo, oh man. 
what is good and what the Lord requires of me, but to do justly, justly. and to love mercy, mercy. all together, and to walk humbly with thy God. Okay, yes. let's do it one more time, because then you'll have like a six eight memorized. He has shown thee. Oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, he has shown thee. Oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly. And to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Oh, okay, you got that memorized. I bet it'll live in your brain like earworm or your ear. Anyway, so it isn't about what they physically sacrificed, I don't think. It is more about <laughs> the Lord has shown you what is good. And this is Luke 7, 5 to 10. The, let, let's think back to Micah 6, 8. What would the voice the voice of Abel's state, the voice of Abel's faith about Micah 6 Did Was it Abel's sacrifice? Abel knows it wasn't his sacrifice. God looked on the sacrifice of Abel with pleasure. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. What is the faith part? The faith part, maybe it was, I can afford to give God my best because He's given it all to me and I'm not going to be out anything. Maybe. Maybe Abel was just so pleased with what God had given him, he decided, I'm going to give some back. I don't know. I don't know. But at any rate, Hebrews said it was a faithful thing he did. The apostles said to the Lord one day, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Oh, really? Okay. I know, for years, for decades, I have read that. And I have said, wow, what could I do with a quarter of a mustard seed? Because I'll never be able to say, let's pretend this is a mulberry bush. Mulberry bush, go be planted in the sea. It's laughing at me. <laughs> I don't have any faith. That's what it's saying to me. Really? Is that what it's saying to me? <laughs> if I, I know I don't. How about if I had just had a quarter of a mustard seed? What would I be able to do? Well, maybe it's not about that. Look at what Jesus says right after that. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now, sit down and eat. No. He's going to say, Won't he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that, you may eat and drink. It's not supposed to say tools. Huh? Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? 
So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants, we have only done our duty. You mean, the servant has to come in, and the master doesn't even say, thanks for being out in the field all day. He's going to come in all sweaty and sunburned and tired. And guess what you get to do? You get to, like, cook for the master, put the food before him, make sure he's tended to, and the master still isn't going to say thank you. And then you get to eat. And then you get to go to bed and do it the next day. Doesn't that sound like drudgery? Clean up after dinner. Clean up after dinner. Okay. If you do that, would you not be becoming someone whose faith is going to grow? If you want your faith to grow, should you want to be able to say to the, to the mulberry tree, go toss yourself in the sea. Or if you want faith, should you consider the servant who didn't even get thanked for working in the field all day and then had to prepare supper for the master and then finally got to eat. I... I think, I think sometimes we kid ourselves when we want faith. What were the disciples really asking for? Were they really asking to be servants? Have you heard the scripture, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, be a servant of all? sacrifice of Abel. The sacrifice of Abel is I'm going to give to God because God has blessed me. And I'm going to give something back to Him. Some of the best. Best I have. Um, this is a curious verse here. Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. If you memorize this, look how short that is. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19 words. You can memorize three verses and only really have to memorize 19 words. That's a good deal, isn't it? That's an excellent deal. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If, if I rejoice always, I could be more like Abel. Abel was happy to give something back to God, even though it was Cain's idea. Well, give Cain a little credit. It was his idea, I think, to sacrifice. Uh, you can clear your throat because that's not stated in the text. But <laughs> I, I suspect it was Cain's idea. But it was Abel who I think rejoiced in the fact that he lived in Eden and got to talk to the Lord and got to herd, have all these herds and, and just give something back. Rejoice always, pray continually, talk to the Lord continually. I think that's what they did in Eden, even after the fall. The faith of Abel was a faith that was in communion with God. I believe he was. Why are we still asked to do that? It's what God wants. It's what he's always wanted. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you give thanks, will you be stingy with what you have? If you are thankful for what you have, will you continually want more? 
Because if you want more, you won't want to give what you have away because you want more because what you have isn't enough and you want more. If you're thankful for what you have, you might share some of it more willingly. So, really, this is almost a restatement of Micah 6, 8 in some ways. To do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. This is what Abel did, I think. And this is what we're asked to do. This list, what a faithful uh, servant does, if this is what Jesus said we must do, <laughs> how would that feel? What kind of a weight would that be on you? Would, I would look at that list and I would just be like, Lord, are you, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Knowing who Jesus is, I'd be glad to do it. Well, yes, yes and no. I would say, when are you, when are you going to say thanks? When do I get a little bit of accolades? When are you going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? If I'm going to be serving like that, I, I don't know. But this, this list here, to me, is like, oh, that's big. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. That list is almost the same size, but it sounds a little more doable, doesn't it? Okay? But if you start off by wanting... Wanting enough faith to toss a, a mulberry bush into the ocean? If that's your desire for faith, it's not going to happen. That's the point. If you're willing to be a servant, God will grow faith in you. I think that's the point. What is the faith of Abel saying. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. What is Abel saying? I, I want to know what Abel is saying. I suspect he's saying something like Micah 6, 8. And if you want to grow your faith, it's time to think about what can I do to serve Jesus? I'm going to tell you just in closing a little tiny story of uh, one time it was after I was divorced and before I was remarried there was a period where I had a lot of sad times and I was working through a lot of pain I was going through and the Lord helped me through it in ways I could talk hours on all the ways he helped me through the pain. But one Saturday morning, I remember it was sunny, and I woke up feeling good, because I didn't feel good. But very often I woke up with pain. This one day I felt good, and I was just being thankful with the Lord. I said, Jesus, I wish I could just give you a hug for all the healing you've done for me, and, and because I can feel good after all this hurt, I can start to feel good. I wish I could just hug you. And 
say thank you. And you know what the first thing that popped into my head, like lightning striking, he said to me, if you do it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. I was just like, oh, 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 oh. wow, what does that mean? And so I decided that I was going to figure out how I could help out at the mission downtown. So anyway, and, and that's where I met Andy, was at that mission. <laughs> but the point is, if you want to give Jesus a hug, we need to think about how we can love each other. How we might, we want to love Jesus and we want to serve him. We want to grow our faith. Forget about the mulberry bush. Faith is a gift, isn't it? Okay, how do you get that gift? How do you get it? You ask for it. You have no control over whether or not God will give you faith, do you? But you do have control in, uh, over whether or not you are willing to be a servant. Not a servant like the perfect one that was on the screen. Just a servant. You have control over that. And I think that's what Abel would say. I think that's what the faith of Abel that would speak to you would tell you to do. And God will increase your faith. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Forget about the mulberry bush. <laughs> and with that, I will say, go be the church. Amen.